everybody, it is Nick here with another Nick's Topics Dragon Ball What If Topic video for you guys today. And today, I am bringing you guys part 10 of What If Nam Became a Z Fighter. Now, to recap the last episode, we ended off with Frieza's defeat in his first form. And ironically, being done with another saga right off the bat because of Nam's inclusion, or just an extra fighter's inclusion. It really changes the story, if you guys have not told from my Giren and Hercule what-ifs. Anyways, Nam, Piccolo, Yamcha, Krillin, Gohan, Goku, and Tien all powered up to their max and stage a surprise sneak attack, much to Frieza's chagrin, and he couldn't do anything about it. He couldn't even transform in time to defend himself. So, the Frieza saga was wrapped up. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention, since Guru tapped into everybody's potential, that also gave them an extra leg up, so Frieza was completely done either way. Even if he had transformed into his final state, it still would have taken a lot out of him, so it wouldn't have ultimately mattered in the end. Anyways, after Frieza and his forces defeat, this time... Purunga is summoned, and the Namekians were brought back to life, because no one else needed to be brought back. Yamcha was the only one that died in the Saiyan attack, ironically. <laughs> Anyways, Nail, like my other stories, gets to remain a separate person. Now, why did he not fuse with Piccolo in this story, since Piccolo's around? Well, I feel that with Piccolo not really getting a true redemption, that he wouldn't be inclined to fuse, because there's not really... A true need. He could have fused whenever he fought Frieza and sneak attack him, but I still feel that Piccolo wouldn't be inclined to do that with his character development in this story. Now let's get on to talking about King Cold, because shortly after finding out that Frieza is dead, in his first form no less, finding out that it was from a Saiyan, a half Saiyan, and a bunch of humans and Namekians, King Cold is obviously rather upset about this and stages his own attack upon the Earth, which he knows to be the Saiyans and Earthlings and Namekians' home. But who attacks this time and kills King Cold and his forces rather effectively surprises everyone and with Goku actually here on the scene and not going to Yardrat, him and everybody else, Goku especially, is surprised at who this person is. And Nam being the most surprised out of everyone. Now, who is this mysterious assailant that took out King Cold and his forces right there on the spot? Well, it is none other than future Nam. N rocking a black beard, and looking a much older version of the Nam that we know, taking on a similar appearance to his GT self. Now, why is Nam the one who goes back in time? Well, that has to do with a lot of things, and there is a good explanation behind all of this, Vegeta being not being there is one of them. But, onto the main focuses... We're going to talk about Goku and the heart virus. Now, few people on my other stories and stories and facts and stuff that I've seen on the internet and YouTube state that Goku got the virus from Earth and that it was an Earth-born virus. I stick by the decision that he got the virus from Yardrat because even though it might have been an Earth-born virus, the vaccine for it took a long time, up until Trunks was the only survivor left. So, if a vaccine had been made then, then why was Goku the only one to get it? No one else got it, not at least that we were aware of. And he was the only one to have gotten it. So Yardret being the primary reason, seems the most logical out of anything else. I'm sorry for those of you that might disagree, but I feel that that's the primary reason. Anyways, 
even if he did get the virus from Earth, the androids would kill him nonetheless. Because even if he survived the heart virus or never got it, he would be killed by the androids nonetheless. Now, future Gohan still survives and actually attains not only Super Saiyan after his father's death at the hands of the androids, but stacks Kaioken on top of it for better training. Because remember, Gohan learned the Kaioken on their way to Namek and from Namek after. And he is the only primary survivor. Now what about Trunks? Well, Trunks would still be born in the story, except without Vegeta, he wouldn't be a Saiyan. He wouldn't be that same Trunks. He would still look the same, most likely, and still rock the sword and everything, but he would be the spawn of Bulma and Yamcha rather than the spawn of Bulma and Vegeta, because Vegeta is gone in this story. Now, what about Nam, you might ask? Well, after the whole thing with the androids, Nam initially wanted to go and just hide out at his village and just forget about all of this, but he remembered that he took an oath to train with everybody and stand by their side. So he used his resources, his cunning, and expertise to survive, and Gohan and Trunks and whoever else was left allowed to buy time for him to go to the past and warn everybody about the androids. Nam, especially after hearing the story and hearing about what his other self had gone through, understands this, and his future self even tells him, train harder than you ever have before, and don't ever leave your friends for even a second, because you don't know what can happen. He also tells Goku to achieve and master, as much as he can, the Super Saiyan form, which, in the time skip leading up to the androids, Goku effectively does. Now, why does Nam tell him about going Super Saiyan and not Gohan? Well, Goku died almost immediately. And even if they had heard about the Super Saiyan from Guru, Gohan had much more mastery over it in the future, and Nam wants to make sure that Goku has that right away. So that whenever Gohan gets it, the both of them are on a good playing field. So, not only does Goku get the Super Saiyan form, but training with it effectively, he gets it to grade 2, I'll say it max. Gohan also gets it to the same level, and they practice with Super Kaioken, and use it very effectively. Now, as for the Earthlings, Piccolo, and everybody else, they get their training to 110% to make sure that they are absolutely ready for the androids. Speaking of which... The fated day comes where 19 and Jiro appear on the island nine miles off of South City. But does this training really amount to anything? Or will this saga end up being as short as many of the others? And that's where we're going to be leaving things for the moment. Hope that you guys are enjoying What If Nom Became a Z Fighter as a whole. What are your thoughts on the future Trunks timeline, and that Nam is the primary reason for going back. Leave a comment down below, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, and I will see you guys in the next video.